You're listening to Inside Blitz with LaVon Kirkland. All right, welcome to Inside Blitz with LaVon Kirkland. I'm your co-host, David Wyatt. We've got a great show for you guys today. In here in studio with me is Mikey Football and, of course, our uh, host in the, with the most, LaVon Kirkland. Hey, man, it's great to be back, man. Uh, I, I love this show, man. It's so informative. It, we're talking about some wonderful stuff. We're getting some great lessons from some classic people. And I guess today is going to be tremendous. You're going to learn a whole lot from him. One of the best coaches that ever coached the game. Absolutely. Willie Jeffries is, I think, one of our favorite people yes, in, no in this world. Uh, and this, yeah. uh, he's done a ton for the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame. And it's a really an honor to have him part of of this show and this podcast. And uh, to have uh, LaVon be able to interact with, with uh, Coach Jeffries and, and for us to even just listen to what Coach Jeffries has to say. I mean, He's an inaugural uh, inductee of ours, 2013. Uh, but of course, you know, as he mentioned, he thinks he's a part of 19 Hall of Fames, which you know, 19 Hall of Fames. That's pretty good. You, you've done you've done well for your life if if you're a part of 19 Hall of Fames. But it once you listen to this, you can you can hear that there's just so much more to him than just football and what he was able to accomplish. Um, uh, of course, you know he's a three-time Black College National Champion. Uh, he won the MIAC Conference seven times as a head coach. He's with South Carolina State for 19 years in two stints, um, in uh, one in the 70s, one in the 80s, and early 2000 to early 2000s. Uh, also, the and we'll talk about this a little bit further is mm-hmm. the first African American uh, to be a head coach at the D1A level at wow. Wichita State. Of course, uh, one of those guys that uh, he was able to coach is Jumpy Gathers, who's from South oh, yeah. Carolina, yep. and uh, probably hint, hint, is going to be on our Class of 2020 nomination list uh, and has been the uh, last couple of years as well. But uh, um, one of the things that I saw in in doing research with Willie Jeffries is that um, most of most football fans have probably saw uh, remember the Titans the movie. Yes. Yep. Well, just to put that in perspective, he and Coach Boone were actually friends and coached together as an assistant, and uh, in North Carolina before uh, before Willie Jeffries went on to SC State, and uh, he. When when Willie Jeffries retired, Coach Boone actually wrote a letter of recommendation for Jeffries to be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame and, quote, says, with his leadership and example, there would not have been the Remember the Titans or the advancement in race relations in sports that we have witnessed. Yeah. That's incredible. He's a yeah. pioneer, obviously, in uh... – in, in our time, and it, and it is awesome to have him uh, on the show. It was great to hear him talk about what it was like to be the first African-American head coach in the D1 game. Right. And, of course, the pressure, you would think, oh, no question. Uh, that that would be some serious pressure, and he held up to it. Oh, uh, yeah, no question about it. And, I mean, I was a defensive coordinator at the college level and the high school level, and <laughs> – for me, that was kind of tough. So I can imagine being the first African American coach on the D1 level to do it. And, you know, he actually did a really good job there. And it, it was really marvelous and exciting to hear his story. I mean, amazing story. If you can, you should tune in to hear what Coach Jeffries has to say and, and some of the things he says about how to be a man and how to um, work hard. Absolutely. Sounds Absolutely. great. Well, let's go to the. Let's go to the phone lines. Let's go to the phone lines and bring them in. All right, here we go. This is Coach Willie Jeffries, and you're listening to the Inside Blitz with LaVon Kirkland. Hey, welcome back. I'm here with LaVon Kirkland and the Inside Blitz, and we're with one of the best coaches that ever graced uh, the state of South Carolina, Coach Willie Jeffries. How you doing, sir? Oh, I'm doing fine, and I certainly uh, appreciate uh, you all having me on on the show, I think it's great. Uh, trust me, Coach, we are very honored as we look through your resume. Quite a resume, Coach. Uh, unbelievable what you have done throughout your tenure as a football coach. One of the questions that I do have is, 
you know, like everybody has an origin story. What was your origin story? What what attracted you to the game of football? Well, you know, it's very it's very ironic. I uh, I majored in civil engineering in college at South Car- South Carolina State, but. Uh, after playing football, we didn't have Pee Wee uh, and all of that then. We'd just get out and play. We we played the sport up in Union. We played whatever sport was in. Mm-hmm. We played it during basketball season. We'd play basketball and and baseball. We would note it for for baseball and then football. We'd play longer. We'd play that a long, long time through football season. And then I went to high school and, and played four years. I went to South Carolina State and played another four. And you know, it was something interesting about the, the way my high school coach and my college coach, I admired those two guys, and, mm-hmm. and, I, and, and they were my role models. And I believe that more than anything, uh, c- trying to pattern after those coaches and, and and I saw how they worked with us when they kept telling us they were concerned about the academic, social, and athletic development of, of the players. I thought that sounded so great. So when I graduate, when I got my degree uh, in June, and the dean had lined, lined all of us up for a job with the highway department starting on July 1st, and we, we went over to Lancaster one day, and, and uh, they needed three coaches. And, shoot, I signed up. I said, here's my chance to <laughs> become a high school football coach. And I signed up to be an assistant uh, football coach at Bar Street High School in Lancaster. So that was your first experience. Now, tell me about the high school level that you coached at, at during that um, point in time. I mean, what was the challenges of being a high school football coach? Well, it was it was a challenge because um, you you had to first of all be a teacher, and you were a teacher coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had to have a place for you on the faculty, uh, uh, a subject that uh, all subjects that you could teach, so you could go out and help coach football. So. Uh, back then, uh, and and I I do love this point that I have seen the evolution of football from the all black high schools to the all black colleges until today, where we have integrated like it's supposed to be and it should have been all the time. So I feel great that I have been able to see all of that uh, pass to get to the point that we are now. But the challenges uh, in high school football, first of all, you know you're going to get the talent. Your talent will only come from the the young men that live in that town. You're going to have to teach uh, at least uh, four periods, four, five periods a day, do your lesson plans, and then you're going to have to coach. Uh, The key to my coaching was that uh, I was an assistant coach and Sandy Gillum, uh, who was our head coach, we're both from Union. Uh, he turned over, he turned the, just about the whole team over to me because he was serving as athletics director. And in those high schools, and I know Levon, you've probably seen this, where they used to have the ag man coaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, they would have the PE guy coach helping the coach. Yes, sir. But sometimes the head coach. They didn't want them a lot in PE because they used up too much time not getting the kids to dress out right. and doing a good job of physical education because they were coaching football. So they started going to to the math or the history guys to to be to be head coaches. So that that was the challenge uh, I had because I was coaching really the whole team with two other assistants. Uh, and one of them was a guy that had graduated from college in 1947. And, uh, of course, this was 1960. But uh, he was just helping wherein what we would ask him to do. So evident, uh, evidently I had the whole whole team. And while Mr. Gilliam uh, was athletic,
athletics direct and head coach. He was doing other paperwork. So it was a it was a challenge. Wow. Well, you listen to Willie Jeffries in the Inside Blitz with LeVon Kirkland. Coach Jeffries, let's fast forward to your South Carolina State days. Now, I have to tell you a little quick story. My, some of my brothers and sisters went to South Carolina State, and my first introduction to you was looking through the um, yearbook. And I would see your face on there and your your football teams. And you've won three national black college football championships, which is a, a, a tremendous, tremendous job. Can you tell me about South Carolina State and what was so special about South Carolina State back in those days? Well, back in those days, it was special because um, our president, Dr. Nance, he supported the program mm-hmm. and we all know that water goes downhill <laughs> it doesn't go uphill that's right so when it comes from the top that he's supporting the football program the the program uh, will, will will go will go in a in a positive direction so we had the best food at, mm-hmm. of any HBCU in the country our campus you couldn't find a, uh, a piece of paper on the campus. Manicured lawns, n- nice dormitories, and I could go out and recruit. Uh, uh, I had the maximum number of scholarships. In those days, we were getting the top students, um, so, so we had uh, great programs in education. It was a special school, and we... Uh, North Carolina Central and North Carolina A&T, they were the big dogs starting out in 70 when the MEAC, uh, with the advent of the MEAC conference. Yes, sir. Uh, 70, uh, 73, 74, my task was to start winning champ, uh, conference championships at South Carolina State. So 73, my first year, we missed it by a half game, uh, uh, Willie Mays Aiken, who became the number one draft choice in baseball from Seneca, South Carolina, he jumped off sides on the extra point, mm. and the team got another try at it, and and the game ended up 14-14. So we had a tie, and we mm. we are with second place. The next five years in a row, we we won the MEAC championship. So now. With it being so special at South Carolina State in those days, uh, we have a total of 16, 16 MEAC championships, more than more than three times the next place uh, team. But as you said, it was a special, special university. And most of our students came from the smaller towns right. in South Carolina. We'd do a little recruiting in Georgia and maybe a little bit in Florida, but we were able to get the, the top athletes uh, out of uh, South Carolina. Nobody from Lamar, South Carolina, though, Coach? Well, you know, uh, <laughs> we wanted to get you, but um, we weren't going to battle. We weren't going we weren't going to battle. We saw some, some other guys we could pick up. But, you know, Lamar, <laughs> back, back then, uh, back then, <laughs> Back then, I don't think, other than yourself, mm-hmm. we would we would go by, and I tell you what we would do, uh, Levon, we would go by, whether the coach had an athlete or not, we'd go by. Yeah, and just one to thing see. I could say about your school, mm-hmm. when we would go by there, being an HBCU, he brought the best ones he had. He didn't do like they used to do at some high schools. There were two or three they would leave in the back. Right. No, you, no use you talking to them because they're not, uh, they're not going to come to South Carolina State. But at Lamar, they would bring out all the guys and give us a chance to talk with them. And I thought that was a great, that was great that the high, they would do that at the high school. Oh, that's pretty awesome, Coach. Uh, great endorsement from Lamar High School. Uh, now we're going to go to um, you being a trailblazer and being the first African-American coach to get hired for a D1 school. Can you walk our audience through that moment and how you felt and the challenges that it presented? 
Well, first of all, uh, Levon, I didn't know at the time that uh, what I was getting into <laughs> until Merle Merle Cole. Uh, he's a judge up in Greenville. Oh Merle yeah, we know him real, real well. Okay, yeah, Merle played for us at A and T when I was coaching at A and T. Uh, he was a smart guy. I kind of depended on Merle. He was a corner, okay. a cornerback, and uh, he he he. After I had taken the job, he told me. He said, they're going to judge you. He said, you, you've you opened the door for black coaches, uh, black head coaches. But he said, you you have a huge uh, task on your shoulders. And they whether, if, if you if you lose, they're going to say that the black guys can't coach at that level. You need to be uh, at least 500 or better uh, uh, a win. And I just didn't know at the time because we were going so great at South Carolina State. Uh, and when they contacted me, I knew they were genuine because they had tried to get John Merritt from Tennessee State four years before that, and he he was in a comfort zone. He wouldn't go. Then they went and tried to get Rudy Hubbard at Florida A&M because they had won the national championship in 1978 uh, when they first started the playoffs. So he wouldn't go. So my name was next, and when I went out there, and I saw Alabama, Tennessee, South Carolina Gamecocks, uh, Arizona State. I saw I saw those schools. Uh, oh, uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and and Tulsa was a pretty good team. When I saw those schools, I said, Now, if I'm going to move up in coaching, I really need to go on and take the job. So I took it. Uh, we had great people in Wichita, Kansas, but we still had to go and recruit uh, the the white kids uh, on the plains of Kansas, where in some towns there weren't even a black family in the whole town. So it was tough, but they but they treated us nicely. But it, but we weren't we didn't even get an average athlete. Uh, from Kansas, we would we would try and get the top ones, but but Oklahoma and Kansas State and uh, Nebraska, they would come in and get get the top ones. So I had to rely on my roots, uh, South Carolina and Georgia, and that's how we we built our team. And then by the second year, we were five five and one. Third year, we were eight and three. So we were off and running. But it was when I realized the weight on my shoulders uh, for, for being the first African-American head coach and to play uh, against Paul Bear Bryant and then turn around and play against Eddie Robinson from yeah. Grambling, being the only guy who has ever uh, done that, uh, it, it just became, uh, uh, I just realized a, a lot of pressure, and and you know, Levon, I see guys now. Sylvester Croons, he he took over at um, Mississippi State, and those guys would call the the young man who was at Notre Dame, but he didn't get a fair shake there. Uh, and and coaches all over, most of the ones that are head, head coaches at the big schools now, they do uh, realize. Uh, Coach at Penn State, I, I go up there and talk with him uh, quite a bit. Most of them realize uh, the guy who, who opened the door and who had to do a reputable job so that others could follow. No doubt about it. We're talking to the legendary Coach Willie Jeffers. Coach, I could talk to you all day. I mean, we're getting a wealth of knowledge that um, perhaps a lot of people really don't know about. And to have a culture of your caliber coming from the state of South Carolina is tremendous. Now, I, I do have a, a, a quiz for you. You ready for the quiz? I'm ready. All right, ready here we go. Now. And I don't have anybody. I, David Wyatt, not here for me to copy off. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I know about copying off other people's paper, but I think you could probably handle this these questions. Okay. Now, I want to ask you, now, how many Hall of Fames are you in? Well, I'm really in about 19. <laughs> uh, yeah, about 19. And uh, 
and I, I narrow it I narrow it down really to seventeen. Okay. <laughs> but but nineteen I'm I'm presently in. Okay. We did some research about you and I mean all the Hall of Fames that you're in, I mean it's tremendous. I I'm in three Hall of Fames and I think that's pretty good, but the Hall of Fames that you're in, I mean, it tells a lot about your career and your path that you, you've taken. Now, if I'm a young man, uh, I want to ask you this question. You you obviously have been successful. I think we know what football and how it made a difference in your life. We want to ask you about success because on this show, we want to be informative. We want to make sure that our young people get the correct information that they need to get. What would you tell a young man who came to you and say, hey, listen, I'm, I'm about to go out in this world and I want to be successful. Uh, and they ask you, what what does it take or what are the keys to success? What would you what kind of advice will you give this young man? Well, you know, first of all, I, I, I would tell them, first of all, that uh, when you get the first job, that's going to be the best job you ever had. And if you leave that one and go to another one, that's going to be the best job you ever had. Right. I tell young coaches now and young men that played for us that go out into the field, go out into uh, uh, Xerox, uh, uh, wherever they go, that the best job you've ever had is the one you had now. And the one that I always refer to, if you work hard, you don't have to pass out resumes every week. You don't have to do that. People are watching you. I didn't know it until the coach, legendary coach at Morgan State, uh, Earl Earl Banks, uh, when I was an assistant at A&T, he came up and told me one day, he said, you know, we've been watching you. Wow. Uh, I have and a couple other coaches. So I tell young men today, work hard at what you do. And you you can have a resume or a bio, but just keep it at home. Uh, don't 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 pass them out. People are watching you, and I I'll just tell them I have never applied for a job, but but if you work hard enough, uh, heights of great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they while their companions slept were toiling upward in the night. I tell them about that. They have to work hard, and. And any time you, you see a guy in a certain position, I talk to Johnny Majors quite a bit, mm -hmm. and I talk to Dave Onestead and, and Jimmy Johnson. Those guys took graduate assistance job after graduating from college, making $60 a month, uh, getting free room and board to try and get on the coaching track. So I just tell young people now, do the very best. The attitude you take about your job, and the, and when I look at one of them, I tell them the way you are now presently is based on the choices you made in life. All of us, the way we are sitting here, it's based on the choices we made as as to where we are. Amen. Now that gave me chill. You sure you didn't preach at any point in time in your life? Well, you know, I was going to be a Baptist, but see, they speak too long. The Baptist. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, they the do. Baptist, a lady opened up a res restaurant in Orangeburg. I said, well, ma'am, how, lo how, how long are you going to be open on Sunday? Mainly on Sundays for after church. She mm -hmm. said, well, we're going to be open from 11 to 1. I said, oh, no, 11 to 3, because, you know, you got the Baptist. They come and leave. That is true. Well, you know, my father was a minister. My mama had to always give him the the look. She so looked at the clock oh, and then look at him and like, okay, yeah. you need to you need to hurry bring up. Bring it on home. Bring yeah, it bring home. it, wrap it up. <laughs> That's right. Like I said before, Coach, um, I could talk to you all day. It's really been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, I think that um, you're doing such a wonderful job. You've helped us out so much. I wish you continued success. And if um, is there anything we can ever do for you, please don't hesitate to let us know. And um, also, next year, make sure you bring your yellow flag, okay? 
Yeah, I'll bring it. Uh, Neely Neely Don sent me another one. I uh -huh. think. Oh hell, I gave I gave it to David White. I yeah, we it. got it now. That's <laughs> yeah, why we're telling you to bring another one. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring my I'll bring a, another one. I get them from one of the head officials in the NFL, and I'll also illustrate the coach's challenge flag. flag. I bring <laughs> one of those red ones with me too. <laughs> well, well, we appreciate it, Coach. Thank you so much. All right, thanks again. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. You're listening to Inside Bliss with LaVon Kirkland. Hey, well, welcome back to the Inside Blitz with LaVon Kirkland. It's been an awesome show. I mean, yes. Coach Jeffries, what an amazing man. We've just scratched the surface with him. We'll have to have him back at least. Oh, part two. Yeah, part two yes. for sure. I mean, wow. The the, I mean, what did he say was the stat, LaVon? Um played with uh played against well he coached against Bear Bryant and he coached against Eddie Robinson. Bear Bryant and Eddie Robinson. Yeah, the only which is coach amazing. to ever do that, right? Yeah, that yeah. is amazing. Yes. What a legend. So this is the part of the show. We love it. Obviously we're all about leadership here at the South Carolina yes. Football Hall of Fame, all about leading ourselves and of course others and we love this. This is the inside look with Levon Kirkland where you share some words of wisdom with our listeners. And so without further ado, let me send it to you, Inside Look with LaVon Kirkland. Well, thank you, Mr. David. I really appreciate that. Uh, the Inside Look today is really more of a story. Uh, I had a tremendous coach with the Pittsburgh Steelers, Bill Cower. And the year that we went to the Super Bowl, I don't know if you guys knew that, we started off three and four. Hmm. So hmm. we were kind of bad. We were, well, we weren't bad. We were a talented team, but we were kind of average, trying to find our way. Neil O'Donnell was hurt at the time, so we were struggling a little bit. Um, after we became three and four, it was our off day. So Coach Kyle was like, hey, I want you to come back with a new mindset, a clear mindset. And really, you're ready to go. You know, um, you know, he said clear mindset. Yeah, whatever. Uh, let's go home and let's get, get this – monkey off our back just go home and relax a little bit so after the bye week we came back and on the board it was we had this um chart and it was zero zero we were like win zero losses zero everybody was like what's going on what's going on and uh, he gets in front of the um, group and he starts talking to us and he said hey listen we're going to start this season all over again right now we're Oh, went up with zero and zero. We're like, okay. And so the next game we went in there, our mindsets were we were, you know, we were starting the season over. This is our first game. So we got our first game. We won that. We're one and up. Okay. We go to Chicago. Chicago's pretty good. We're two and up. All right. Everybody's starting to believe in this. Okay. We went three and up, four and up. We ended up going like eight and up. Hi. We end up getting to the Super Bowl. We end up going to the playoffs. Um, going to the Super Bowl. And basically, what the lesson is here is just having, sometimes you have to have, uh, you have to change your mindset. We're three and four, mm -hmm. and most of us probably thought like maybe the season won't go as well, but he did a good job as a good coach always should of really changing your mindset, and you can start over. And a lot of times we get in these situations where it's not good for us or we're in trouble. And understanding that you can change around at any time is about having the right mindset. He put us in the right mindset, and therefore we were able to go on, win a lot of games, go to the Super Bowl. Now, we didn't win the Super Bowl, but we went on and we improved, and that's what having a great mindset is all about, and also having a great coach. That's good. Thank good you. information right there. I like Appreciate Coach it. Coward. Yeah, you know, um, only thing about Coach Kyer, you know, you you know, he kind of spit a little bit, you know, so you had to turn your head at a, a certain angle. But other than that, he was a tremendous coach, really a young coach at the time. So um, uh, I had a lot of fun playing with him. He's a great coach, and a shout out to Coach Kyer. He's one of my favorites. That's awesome. That's awesome. All Thank right, you. Mikey Football. This is where you get to tell us a little bit about the Hall of Fame and what's going on. Absolutely. Uh, so with the Hall of Fame, we do a lot of programs here in the area. We're trying to uh, be a catalyst for youth workforce 
and uh, community development. And one way that you guys can help us do that is become a supporting member of the Hall of Fame. And it's an easy situation. All you have to do is go to scfootballhof.org slash join, and it's $9.95 a month. It's under $10 a month. And you can help us sustain this program, that the programs that we're doing, and allow us to have a, a statewide um, influence on our youth, our workforce, and our community. And uh, it's super important to us. And, yeah, we like – uh, honoring our legends. We love uh, interacting with guys like LeVon Kirkland and Willie Jeffries, uh, but that's really just a platform for what we really want to do, and that's and that's help the state of South Carolina. So scfootballhof.org slash join. If you're a football fan, you owe it to yourself to be a supporting member of the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame. And, of course, you can always follow us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at scfootballhof. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. And thank you to everybody that has joined up to become a sustaining member. I appreciate that. We all appreciate that. There have been many of you that have joined. It's less than $10 a month for you. That's a small amount to you, but it's a big amount to us, everybody getting together. And as Mike said, you owe it to yourself. If you like this game of football and you like South Carolina, you owe it to yourself. Become a member today. Sign up. So on behalf of all of us here at the Inside Blitz with LeVon Kirkland, I want to thank you for tuning in. Please support our sponsors. Thanks to Evan Tripp for the great production. Thanks for Evan. Coach Willie Jeffries for an awesome interview and all the support he does for us and so many others in South Carolina and around the country. That's it, that's it for, the, for us. God bless you. All right. You're listening to Inside Blitz with LeVon Kirkland.